Really, for whatever reason, I am collecting these scrap pieces of solder and I decided to melt them together. Stuff that I am holding in hand is what I got. But as I was melting this, something weird happened. Now let me demonstrate with this little tiny piece. What I was doing was, basically I got hundreds of these balls and I was trying to melt them together, so simple as that. Some of them really didn't want to go anywhere, so I was trying to move them by, basically by flame, and then they started to burn. I mean, I was surprised, but I can understand this, even though it's such unreactive metal. But then if you look closely, it starts to transform into something, something. Man, one thing that drives me nuts is when the YouTubers cannot operate their cameras. So here you can clearly see that the stuff is reacting with the air. I guess I will refer to this new substance as the stuff. Here you go. Is this better? So another thing we can observe is that the stuff is non-metallic. Okay, so let's do this in bigger scale. This could be quite interesting. So it's pretty obvious that you need more energy for this, as one would expect. Also notice very uniform oxide coating. And here we go. The stuff emerges. Oh, this was unexpected. Completely different stuff. Yeah, this is interesting. Seems that we are reducing it with the flame. Or at least it's shiny and no oxides are forming, so... What the hell was that? Hmm, it seems that the completely different stuff is the intermediate stage of the stuff. Yeah, and by the way, this solder was leaded, so... This is definitely a good idea. Now here you can see all three forms of the stuff coexisting. Also notice that the metal mesh is really not damaged at all, so this rules out reaction with the iron. So at this point I was interested, what exactly do you need to create the stuff? So I'm trying to repeat this experiment using lead-free solder and a bit of human hair. Okay, so here we have this uniform oxide coating. And now it seems to be reduced, or evaporated, or destroyed, or whatever. And I would say that for a moment there was a flame. And then this rapid flattening, almost wetting action. And then... nothing. Now this is quite a bit magnified view after cooling. And as you can see, we got a potato. This oxide coating was very easily removed and after scratching the surface you can see that it's shiny and metallic. Okay, once again, repeat using brand new leaded solder. Uh, here we go. Aha! Gotcha! I believe this was the most Soviet gacha that you ever heard. Okay, so this means that leaded solder will do this thing. Man, look at that. That's insane. I guess I will poke it a little bit. Okay, so what I will do now is I will be slowly hitting this ball of solder up to the point at which it will start to transform to the stuff. Or was it the other stuff or yet another stuff? Whatever. Okay, we are getting there.
Okay, just a little bit. Oh boy, this is surreal. Okay, so I got two theories explaining what's going on there. A. We have created a tiny portal to hell and the forces of evil are leeching out. Your mortal fool, all the ties, please continue. And theory number B. So I'm heating these things up and both solder and the surface on which it is is hot. And it seems that the solder is not really good at wetting hot surfaces. So it will start to burn. As the surface cools down, it immediately wets it. This will cool some parts of solder and these parts will not burn anymore. So they will turn black. However, if the temperature of the black stuff is high enough, it will oxidize rapidly and start to burn that oxide, I guess. Considering that this information is pretty useless, I am quite satisfied with my theory. I guess you can apply this knowledge when doing some plumbing. Basically, don't heat the living shit out of the tubes. Anyway, so I collected the powder that burned and tried to dissolve it in hydrochloric acid. Actually, I'm not really sure what I've got because it doesn't really dissolve very well. On the other hand, the solution turned this milk white color, so something has dissolved. I added more hydrochloric acid and a bit of hydrogen peroxide and it starts to form this greenish yellow color. After a while the solution cleared up and there was a lot of undissolved solid. When I neutralized the solution which was yellow, I got some yellow carbonate, which suggests that there is either iron contamination or some organic chemistry. Ok, so that's about all that I got for now. Working on a few more videos, hopefully more interesting than this one. So see you next time.